Hi there, everybody. Um, welcome to this um, short presentation. It's been understandably quite a concerning time for everybody. There's been a lot of questions and um, concerns about how to keep safe um, having lymphoma, but also how your family members can help as well. So, and there's a lot of information in the media. So we're lucky today um, to have Dr. Chan Chi, who's um, leading hematologist at Sir Charles Gardner, Hollywood Private, and um, lead at the Blood Cancer Research WA in Perth. And he'll be joining us today to provide a bit of information on how the um, coronavirus affects lymphoma and cell our patients and, and what some of the things you might need to know and, um, and how we're going to be managing that. And Lymphoma Australia will be keeping you updated and I'll give you a bit of an update how we can do that um, after Chan's um, presentation. Hey, Chan, how are you? Thanks, Donna. It's a challenging time for everyone. So thanks, thanks for the invitation to talk. Um, so briefly, I've, I've uh, received quite a few questions from people and obviously a lot of the time I've spent with my, my own patients over the last um, few weeks has been talking about the impact of uh, coronavirus on, on them and, and, and what it means. I think that um, clearly this is a major public health issue and um, something which we should all be concerned about. Uh, at the moment, we, we think that patients who have um, uh, other health conditions such as cancer, uh, a blood cancer like lymphoma or CLL, may be at increased risk of complications if they contract the coronavirus. But it's important to stress that the amount of information that we have about that at the moment is fairly um, limited because um, the the, the, the studies which have been published are, are very small and it's very early days. But um, many of the questions that I get asked about this are, you know, are patients with lymphoma more likely to get uh, COVID-19? Um, we, we don't actually know the answer to this, but if you look at the experience in the general population, it does appear to be quite a contagious virus. And so the advice that I'm giving to people is to basically to, to stay at home as much as possible and not go out for, for anything except the absolute essentials. And that's very similar to what the advice the government is giving to most people anyway, but I'm telling my patients with lymphoma and CLL that they should be extra cautious and avoid going out uh, and seeing people wherever possible. So don't shake hands with anyone. Try not to touch um, when you're out. If you do have to go out, take hand sanitizer with you stay a minimum of 1.5 metres away from people. And just, uh, if, you, if you view potentially everyone and everything outside of your house as potentially infectious, then that will probably be an appropriate guide to how you should interact with the environment. Um, another theme along questions people have asked me is if I do happen to get coronavirus, am I going to get a more severe illness? Now, again, the, the, the data is, are quite limited around, around this. Um, We've got some early studies uh, from Wuhan in China suggesting that there was an increased um, risk of death from uh, coronavirus if you had cancer, but it was a pretty small study and only uh, most of those patients had lung cancer and the risk appeared to be around about 5%, which is higher than the average um, population, which, was, which is more like 1% or 2%, but um, not as high as, say, having um, chronic lung disease and, and things like that. Again, important to stress that this information was not specific to patients with lymphoma. We don't have that information yet, but I think it does speak to the fact that people who've got um, other, uh, other health problems, and particularly who've had recent chemotherapy, may be at increased risk of complications should you happen to get coronavirus infection. And again, it speaks to the need to be very careful in terms of what, what you're limiting your exposure to, to the outside world so that you don't get the infection in the first place. Um, so along similar lines to that, um, I've had, I've seen many, many of you have sent questions in about I'm, um, I'm having chemotherapy or I've had rituximab. Um, uh, what, is, what is my uh, increase in risk and, and uh, what does that mean? So uh, the answer is it, it depends on the, uh, in, on the type of chemotherapy that you've had. So uh, for instance, there are some, not all chemotherapy programs are equal when it comes to their impact on your immune system. It appears that a, a branch of your immune system called T cells are particularly important for helping fight against viral infections. And T cells are 
um, infl are affected more by certain types of chemotherapy like fludarabine and bendamustine, which are commonly used to treat lymphoma. So as you know, uh, many patients with CLL receive a chemotherapy regimen called FCR, and many, many patients with follicular lymphoma receive a treatment called bendamustine um, with, the, with rituximab or abinutuzumab. And we, we think, if you, if you look at the large studies in which these, these um, uh, drugs were used, there was a higher rate of um, vi viral infections um, when people were treated with these kinds of chemotherapy drugs, which is a slightly different pattern of infections to what we see when people receive um, chemotherapy programs like CHOP or CBP. So uh, as a consequence of that, if you have been treated with a, a chemotherapy regimen using um, one of these drugs, fludarabine or bendamustine, probably again, uh, extra important to be, to be careful. Um, How's that changing things moving forward? I mean, uh, I, I think that um, within our own department, we, we've, while this pandemic is ongoing and for the foreseeable future, we're actually trying to use more um, CHOP and CVP than we are bendamustine um, because of this issue. We, obviously, we don't have any um, prospective studies to show that this is the right thing to do. But if, if you think about the impact these drugs have on the immune system, it, it makes sense to, to try to spare people from treatments which may uh, compromise their ability to fight off viral infections as we move forward. Um, another question that people have frequently asked is, uh, what about maintenance uh, rituximab? Um, I'm receiving that. Uh, what does that mean for my risk of COVID-19 and should I continue it, should I stop? Look, it's a, that, this is another difficult issue. Um, we, rituximab affects B cells rather than T cells, but we know that people who are getting maintenance with rituximab can get reduced levels of antibody. That's called um, hypogammaglobulinemia or reduced levels of antibody in the blood. And um, the risk of getting things like sinus infections and pneumonia uh, does appear to be increased in people who are receiving rituximab maintenance. So that's the, the price that you pay for the, um, the extra remission length that you get from rituximab maintenance. Now, the studies in follicular lymphoma that, that looked at re maintenance rituximab it did, never showed an overall survival benefit. And so what that means is that the, the benefit is really, it's keeping your lymphoma away longer, but it's not making you live longer. And as a consequence, um, the, again, it's an individualized discussion um, with, between each patient and their specialist because they know you best, they know your history and, and um, the treatment that you've had in your situation. But in general terms, I am actually having conversations with my patients about either deferring or cancelling their maintenance rituximab at this point in time because I think now that the, the cost-benefit um, analysis is now probably more in favour of discontinuing or at least delaying the maintenance therapy at the moment um, because it um, potentially is going to increase the risk of pneumonia or, or viral infections in, in this pandemic. So, so that is a conversation that I am having with my patients at the moment. And most of my patients, uh, when, I, when we talk about it, are electing to at least defer the maintenance uh, therapy at the moment. I, I guess the one potential exception to that rule would be if, uh, if a, a patient was receiving uh, maintenance rituximab for mantle cell lymphoma, which does occasionally happen because uh, there was a study that showed there was an overall survival benefit. Um, and so because of that, you could make a stronger argument for continuing that treatment. Um, so uh, other people have asked questions about um, uh, whether they should continue to work um, in, in the light of either having lymphoma or, or being on ongoing treatment. And I think that that's a very complex uh, issue, which I, it's going to be uh, individualised depending on what you do and what your contact with um, other people is and what treatment you've had and how long since your last treatment and all the rest of it. So it's a very, very difficult to answer specific questions like that. Um, and, and that would really be something that you would need to discuss with your individual specialist. Um, however, I, I would say that um, as this is quite a dynamic situation, as you know, and it's important to hear what the messaging is from your, your state government um, by, the, by the media and, and state government websites, as they have the most up-to-date information about what the current status of uh, coronavirus is, um, wh whether there's community transmission or not, and what the actual risks of that are at any given time. 
and it's important to stay on top of that. Um, lastly, um, people often ask, well, what happens, what should I do if I get um, symptoms which may be coronavirus? Um, what, what should I do then? And again, I think the, the advice will, will depend on um, your, your individual circumstances and where you are. In general terms, there is a COVID um, hotline, which you can always call for advice. And if you do call these numbers um, for advice, it's very important to tell, tell the person on the other end of the phone that you do have a blood cancer lymphoma or CLL, so that they uh, are aware of that when they're counselling you. Um, I still think at this point in time, even though coronavirus is getting more more common, particularly in New South Wales and Victoria and, and Queensland, the majority of people by far who've got respiratory symptoms and fever will have causes other than COVID-19. And so it's uh, important to, to bear that in mind. Um, we do have a, a shortage of um, test kits available. And so each government has its own sort of policy about who should be tested. And it's important to follow the instructions of your healthcare providers, your GP and the COVID-19 clinic or hotline in, in regards to assessment. Of course, if you've had chemotherapy recently and you know that there's a chance you may be neutropenic and you have a fever, then you should of course follow the standard um, uh, avenue if you have um, uh, a a low white blood cell count and fever and contact your haematologist as you would and be managed uh, in the same way that you always would be by the emergency department um, or, or whatever your, your haematologist has instructed you to do. Um, I, I think that's probably most of what I wanted to cover actually. Donna, can you think of anything else that, um, that people want to know that I, that I haven't mentioned? Mm -hmm. No, I think you've pretty much covered everything. I guess a, a common question I'm getting to from people is should they have the flu vaccination? Oh, of course, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so definitely, yeah. Definitely so, have the flu vaccination as soon as it becomes available. Um, the additional consideration for pa patients with lymphoma or CLL, uh, particularly if you've had rituximab or abinutuzumab therapy, is that it blunts your ability to respond to the vaccine. And I suggest, uh, a, you know, mo most most the information suggests that a second booster vaccination in August is, is appropriate. Okay, that's good to know too. Yeah, thank you. And I think you've pretty much covered most of that. And um, if you do have any further questions, anybody, please um, contact um, the Lymphoma Nurse Support Line on 1800 953 081, um, which is a toll-free number, or you can email nurse at lymphoma.org.au and I can um, answer those questions. If not, I can forward that to, to Chan to answer as well. So hopefully we've covered most of your questions. I know there's a lot, there's um, a lot of concern out there, but hopefully this has sort of summarised um, some of the things you should be doing to have conversations with your um, specialist as well. And just a reminder for everybody that Lymphoma Australia are obviously here to support you all through this time. Um, and um, if you're needing, wanting to have regular updates, which we've been doing through newsletters and updates um, through our website, um, if you want to sign up to our um, email um, newsletter updates as well. You can sign up through our website as well. Our online um, private Facebook group is a great support for patients and carers to be able to communicate with others, especially since we're all being locked away and isolated a lot. It's a good way to be able to communicate with other people. And that's called Lymphoma Down Under. And it's um, a very uh, from across Australia. Another couple of ways we can keep you updated. We do have... Um, about to put a second one out today on our fact sheets on coronavirus and um, what that means for people with lymphoma and some ways to try and keep yourself healthy, some practical tips um, and also reputable websites that you can get the real-time um, up-to-date information from and another contact details and also putting one out today as well on and other support services that can support you through this time I and mean, how you get medications and groceries and things like that too and then very important to try and keep you all feel like you're supported um, amongst this community we're also putting on online coffee catch-up groups which we'll be advertising through the facebook group and through our email distribution too so ways of looking at ways that we can try and um, reach you at home as we're all home. So please don't hesitate to contact us all. And thank you so much to, for joining me today, Chan. Yep, all good. Thanks, Donna. Take care.